Hello everyone. Thank you all the attendees for joining us today. I hope all of you had a great time networking with your peers in our networking lounge. If you have not visited, no worries. The platform will be open till 5.30 p.m. today, so you can start networking. A very good afternoon to all of you. I'm Snehan welcoming you all on behalf of Solar Quadrant and First View Group to our webinar on Next Generation Solar and Water Solution for Utility Scale Projects, Bangladesh Edition. Let me briefly take you to an overview of today's event. As we know, the solar industry is seeing a surge in new technologies. Inverters are one of the major and important components of solar PV plant and are the mainstay of utility scale solar industry. So choosing the right inverter is increasingly important <clears throat> to generate the massive amount of energy these products strike for. In this open discussion, our experts will discuss their experience and technology expectations integrated with cost-effective systems to drive the growth in the segment. Now, can I request my team to start playing a sponsor video? Economies is advancing rapidly with its clean energy transformation to meet the aspirations of a billion people. SunGrow, a leading global supplier of renewable inverter solutions, took a decisive step in 2018 by establishing its manufacturing unit in India and reinforced its long-term commitment to the Indian solar market. The state-of-the-art factory, located near Bengaluru, is equipped with the latest infrastructure and testing facilities. It will soon work at an annual production capacity of 10 gigawatts. With the latest infrastructure and testing facilities, the SunGrow Indian factory has a complete local team who perform their job meticulously and spend their time as a close family. I am assembling uh, string and uh, central inverters with utmost ease and uh, my main responsibility is to provide uh, the right quality product to the customers. Over the last three years, SunGrow has created a benchmark in India with its world-class facility to meet the ever-growing market demand in and outside India. SunGrow's India factory is a shining example creating value under Make in India initiative while forging ahead with its mission, clean power for all. Thank you for playing the video. Thank you. 
Thank you for playing the video. So before starting today's proceeding, I take this opportunity to thank and welcome our partner for the event, Sangro. Now, without any further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Rafi Hussain, sir, Sangro, to give his presentation. Welcome on screen, Rafi, sir. Mm, hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, I hope uh, all of you are fine. And thanks to all of you uh, to join this uh, solar quarter as well for arranging this wonderful uh, webinar session. I'm going to give some short presentation on behalf of so here we go now. Uh, is my uh, screen is visible? Uh, yes, sir. Nahil? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, everyone. Thank you. Uh, this, uh, in this presentation, uh, we are going to some uh, give you some short brief on the Sunroll Power Supply Company Limited. Uh, in that part, we are going to cover three segments. Who is Sunro? Uh, Sunro's present presentation in Bangladesh and TV and EOS solution is uh, going to be uh, described on the last session. So, who is Sunro? Uh, we are the most world's most bankable inverter uh, uh, by uh, recognized by uh, Bloomberg NEF uh, in uh, 2019. Uh, we are 100% bankable uh, for the uh, uh, financial projects and uh, a focus leader in inverter technology. Uh, our in uh, you know, company has been founded by Professor Chow in, in 1997 in China, Hefei. Our plant is based in China uh the hefe and we have uh, come to the global market in 2006 uh first of time we are going to supply our inverters in japan and the netherlands for the first time being and in 2011 we have got enlisted in a stock Shenzhen stock exchange um, for the first time and uh, we uh, secured a uh, global market share uh, in number one according to our shipment in 2015 so uh, in 2018, we are put up our uh, India factory, uh, which previous capacity was three gigawatt. And nowadays uh, we, are, we are capable to uh, produce 10 gigawatt per annum. Mm -hmm. In 2019, we are uh, hit our 10 gigawatt installation all over the world in 150 countries. Uh, and in 2020, we joined our RE uh, enlistment are enlisted comp 100 companies so here uh, you can see our core product uh, is pv inverter and ess system uh, rather than we have also the pv floating solution and we also have the project development team um, who are doing uh, ipp project as well as epc on uh, some uh, projects uh, case by case basis and we also have the energy vehicle uh, system and uh, wind energy converter and EV charging uh, station as well. So you can see we can uh, uh, show you our uh, revenue uh, and the shipment parameters uh, from the past uh, decade. You can see our comp uh, compound annual growth is for 42.6%. Uh, and uh, we have been shipped uh, 35 gigawatt in 2000. Uh, 2020 in China it's 13 and uh, internationally it's 22 gigawatt. So yeah, we can uh, see our uh, global uh, foot, uh, footprints all over the world. Uh, you can see here uh, we majorly installed our uh, inverters in the China, which uh, capacity is 125 gigawatt. After that, we are very well accepted in Europe and as well as North America. You can see the um, figures. Uh, there is a uh, 14 gigawatt uh, installation we have done in Europe. And uh, in North America, we are doing, uh, we have done 11.5 gigawatt. And in India, we also shipped uh, 10 gigawatt milestone uh, very recently. So you can, uh, 
this is our china factory picture you can see this is the capa this has been uh, capacity of 80 gigawatt per annum and our indian factory capacity is 10 gigawatt per year and we also have the ess uh, set up uh, in our factory for ess production and the lithium ion as well battery as well here is our india factory picture well, with the capacity of 10 gigawatt per year mm, you can see there uh, central inverter we also are uh, manufacturing here uh, here are some India factory achievements I want to show you. Uh, we have shifted 11.5 uh, gigawatts in India and all, all over uh, outside the India. And we have manufactured till today uh, 16,000 units in uh, India and overseas. And uh, we are making 30 plus models uh, for the local and uh, global market. And uh, we ensure secure, we have secured uh, 250 employees uh, job in that particular region. So, see. Uh, we are uh, like to brief on that part. We are mainly uh, the uh, technology driven country. So we are invested our uh, money in our R&D department. You can see there is a 8.7% of our total revenue has been invested on uh, 2020 uh, for the development of the product. And uh, we are trying to ensure that uh, our customer are going to uh, get the good products uh, from our end and from the R&D department. You can see, and uh, we have the cumulative patents of uh, 3,100 uh, application as of today. So we have our own test settling uh, laboratory uh, in China, and Sunco Testry uh, Center is certified by TUV Rhineland, uh, TUV SUD, CSAUL, and it's the first one in China who received WMT certification from TUV Rhineland. So Clean power for all is our mission. Uh, nowadays, uh, as of today, uh, sorry, uh, we are generating 218.1 billion kilowatt hour of clean energy and offsets 174.5 million tons of carbon dioxide, which is a, a good number. Uh, so we are, uh, as you told you before, we are in uh, going to, we are invested in RE100 companies. So our target is going to uh, switch our full operation to renewable energy by 2028. You can see our uh, China factory picture here. Uh, there is a dedicated inspection line of FQC, dust proof ACD room, temperature and humidity controllers house and quality manufacturing process and new SMG line for PCB uh, manufacturing. So somewhere in Bangladesh, uh, we have done, uh, as of today, to, uh, doing, uh, done one project in uh, Manikon Chibaloy, which is uh, done by our EPC team, and we have supplied our uh, central inverter in that portion. And we are also supplied 100 megawatt central inverter in the uh, Mongola Desert, uh, which uh, IPP uh, project owner is Orion Group. Mm, in that, uh, you can see our central inverters. And one megawatt big Zimbo project, we are also going to supply in this project in our central Indo water. So uh, we appoint our local distributor or channel partner for the commercial and residential segmented in water in Bangladesh and their UCC, and they're going to support you in each and every uh, uh, portion of our uh, residential and in water in Bangladesh in that part. So there we are, we have uh, three or four, uh, three segmented inverter we are mainly provided. One is utility, another is CIN, and another one is residential one. So you can see the utility scale system solution for the flat fairing, the most used uh, central inverter in Bangladesh uh, aspect, we are using this one, SG3125-HV. This is uh, with MV uh, without MV solution, and it is also pro uh, provide as can we can provide with MV solution as well, with transformer, uh, switch gear, and uh, the monitoring system. So there is a, another utility scale solution, which is a string in water for the hilly terrain area, and it's compatible with our 6.3 megawatt uh, MV solution system. You can see here, this is our uh, CIN. Uh, segmented inverter. We have three model, 110, 50, and 33. So uh, the best part, uh, the most important part of our important, and I'm going to highlight that 
that uh, we have the uh, anti uh, we have a smart cooling system in our inverter and we have a, a protection system for ipc66 and c5 for anti corrosion which is uh, make us uh, different from the others so this is our residential system solution we have a residential uh, system solution from 5 kilowatt to uh, to 20 kilowatt and as of today we have been shifted more than uh, 5 lakh units all over the world um, so yeah, we have uh, already installed uh, 184 gigawatt so today you can see uh, inverter all over the world in 150 countries and we also have the 25 cities uh, so you can see some of our uh, project pictures here it's a uh, 205 megawatt in uh, fresno usa and uh, 400 megawatt in india and 250 another one is uh, india also and there is a uh, 130 megawatt in El area so you can see there is a 500 another 500 megawatt in china as well only and the lithium uh, ion battery should be taken from the Samsung SDI and so uh, it's uh, the range is from the 3 kilowatt to 6.9 megawatt uh, this is uh, the complex solution including all the things uh, you need to mention on that part so you can see our ESS solution provided all over the world you can see there is a 100 megawatt solution uh, we have been installed in UK and uh, there is a hundred uh, 20 megawatt in china as well so here are some footprints all over the world we have uh, installed 80 8, uh, 80, uh, 800 megawatt all over the world through uh, 2000 uh, sorry 2020 so that's all for my end so thank you all over to you Shinali. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful presentation and setting the tone for today's event. So now it's time to begin with our much awaited panel discussion, which is on next generation solar and weather solutions for utility scale products in Bangladesh. And to discuss this, we have in this panel with us Dr. Mr. S. P. Sharma, Ray's Power Infra, Mr. Sharia Rehman Chaudhary, United International University, Mr. Sudhir Patak, Hero Future Energies. Mr. Rajiv Paul Sangro, Mr. Shafiq Parsi, IB Vigor GMBH. The discussion will be led by Mr. Hassan Aziz Itkoy. Now, I will welcome all our panelists on the screen and requesting Hassan sir to lead the discussion. Uh, thank you, Snehil. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So thank you everyone and thank you all panelists um, and thank you Solar Quarter for having me here. So uh, thank you Mr. Hussein for your uh, very conclusive discussion about the Sun Grove Central Inverter. So here we uh, have uh, to, going to discuss about uh, the ins and out and uh, basically the, uh, the features of the Central Inverter and the suitability of the Central Inverter in uh, utility grids or utility scale projects. So in this regard, uh, so according to our panelists, I want to go first uh, to Mr. Shari Ahmed Choudhury. Uh, uh, Mr. Shari Ahmed Choudhury, are you with us? Yes, Mr. Hassan. Hello, can, can you hear me? me? Yes, you're audible, but I think you're not visible. Yeah. Okay. Could you please check your video? So it's given, but Uh, Sorry, sir. Can you switch off your video if you have some network issues? Okay. Can we continue in this regard? 
or in this manner okay we have lost so uh right now i think uh we will come to mr sharir again uh here i want to invite mr shafiq worsi uh to uh provide some light on how smart technologies uh, in the new age, central inverter help to optimize the utility solar system and drive growth in the segment. So, Mr. Shafiq Worsi. Yeah. Can you hear? Thank you. Yes. yes yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, the thank floor you is yours. Much. Okay. Thank you. So, good afternoon, everyone. Thank right. you for joining. Uh, thank you, Solar Quarter, for organizing this event. Uh, so, to answer your question, I think, uh, yes, this. Uh, Innovation in the inverters do provide uh, do have a lot of impact on the project performance, and as well as uh, you know optimize the plant. Uh, if you see uh, uh, the current scenario with uh, more and more grid tied inverters connected to the grid, and also integration of uh, ESS, uh, the requirement for the inverters to uh, you know work more smartly so to say has increased so i think i think this innovation is is kind of a transform it plays a transformative role you know in digitizing the grid as well as increasing the efficiency efficiency of the plant uh, so uh, if i uh, basically if you want to see the impact of uh, how how uh, significantly this uh, innovations within the inverter uh, impacts the performance or optimize the uh, system is during the operations and maintenance phase of the plant. So in particular, if you see uh, the maintenance part is where the impact is the most. Uh, we are now able to, uh, uh, to have preventive maintenance due to the additional sensors that are being installed within the inverters. This uh, uh, also provides uh, the uh, DC system or the overall system. This improves the system efficiency as well. Uh, uh, as we as we have seen that nowadays all the inverters are being able to you know gather information at a much granular level uh, from the string as well as so it it is basically uh, it has become a smart uh, device. So to say, and it uh, and in this times we actually need the inverter to be more uh, efficient. So yeah, so if you see, uh, uh, if I take an example uh, uh, during monitoring, we most of the developers uh, plan to uh, you know monitor plants using drone, and to compensate that, I think the inverters with uh, a granular level monitoring uh, helps in you know. Uh, provides an intelligent way and much faster way to monitor strings and detect faults. Also, I would like to mention one point, which is also very important. Uh, since since this uh, inverters are able to gather data uh, at a much granular level, we, we would be totally, uh, we uh, would be able to exploit the power of AI and machine learning, I think, with these inverters. Because the more data we have, we, we would be able to, you know, uh, predict better in the future. Uh, one one important aspect to it is uh, the financing of the project. If we are able to focus predictions in a much better way by using the data we are fetching from the inverters, so I think I think that would help the financiers or the developers, you know, make smart decisions, a more informed decisions on the investment, and uh, as they might get a more accurate. Uh, data or predictions on the energy forecast. Also, if you see, uh, basically uh, the maintenance part, uh, we might we are able to somewhat uh, reduce uh, or maybe decrease the uh, human intervention. I mean, if you see the inverters have been able to you know detect faults much faster. Uh, previously, it used to take uh, a, a normal inverter. We used to, it used to take almost. Uh, two to three days to detect any kind of fault by validating uh, uh, validating the performance of the plant uh, day by day. But now with the additional uh, sensors and everything, I think the data that we are getting it is allowing us to you know uh, detect these faults uh, much faster. So overall, I think this has created an impact as to in, it has increased the performance of the 
assets and going forward if you see uh, the uh, these smartness in the inverters are more required to stabilize the grid and in a country like bangladesh where uh, we have faced issues uh, with grid fluctuation or so as to say the it is comparatively less stable the grid infrastructure uh, integration of these kind of inverters would probably you know help in uh, digitizing or automating the grid in a much efficient manner so yeah i think i think it has uh, created it has a lot of impact on the performance as on the plant and as well as on the grid side it it is it would be helpful in stabilizing uh, the grid as well so yeah. Thank you, Shafiq Warshi, for your important and uh, important informations. So uh, right now, uh, we have find that uh, Mr. Sharir Choudhury is already connected with us. Uh, Mr. Sharir, uh, could you hear us? Can you hear us? Uh, Mr. Sharir Choudhury. Can you hear me? I think we have a technical list. So I am moving towards the next uh, speaker, uh, Mr. S. P. Sharma, Vice President, Procurement Rice uh, Power Infra. So uh, my question to uh, Mr. S. P. Sharma: What are the parameters needed to consider while the selecting the right central inverter? So, Mr. S. P. Sharma, the floor is yours. Uh, Hi, thank you, Hassan. Yeah, and uh, thank you, Solar Quarter, to uh, choose me as a speaker and uh, question me the basically a right question for everyone. The, uh, this question is also very much important because if we choose uh, means what parameter we should uh, select during finalization of uh, inverters. So this is the main important, and it's a uh, in inverters are backbone of any solar plant. Everybody is aware and uh, uh, people sitting are here very much aware about the, uh, they have already proven track record. Sorry, uh, all type of inverters and uh, the what exactly we are facing challenges. And uh, er earlier, if we talk uh, uh, about uh, seven, eight years, uh, means if it, uh, if we talk about uh, 70, 80 years old, uh, then that time in India and uh, no, uh, in India and Bangladesh, there was no proven track record was there. Now uh, we have uh, in India, if we talk about India, we have a lot of uh, inverters are using everywhere. A lot of plants are there. Even as a EPC, we are also using many type of inverters here. So I have uh, means uh, I have a better idea how we select the which central inverter for better for us and uh, what should we avoid and what should we uh, take care. So first of all, uh, we should uh, uh, during finalization of uh, inverter, we have to check what is the uh, proof code. Basically, if a uh, new company is there, uh, something uh, I don't want to say name uh, here any companies because they have they don't have a proven track record in india and they launch on a very cheaper rate but at a later stage we find that a lot of problems are coming and now they are uh, means uh, they are uh, not uh, getting uh, regular business from india fewer uh, already we tested them and find that uh, uh, they are not uh, able to continue uh, with us so major points we have to take care during finalization what are the uh, basically uh, what should uh, the brand is there and what is the uh, proven track record uh, like uh, sungro uh, if we talk about sungro earlier we use uh, 2.5 megawatt inverters in uh, our one of uh, project covid and uh, in 6 7 years we never find any problem uh, and never lodge any complaint regarding after sale service. So uh, inverter should be like this. The after sale service should be very important. And if you don't find any complaint, then uh, this is the big uh, achievement for that company 
that uh, uh, it should be eligible to continue business with the uh, concerned EP, uh, EPC. Okay, so uh, we have to go with the brand who is present globally, basically. Uh, if uh, any uh, any brand is there and uh, present globally, like Sungro, Sungro is uh, around the globe. It's, uh, and uh, now they started plant uh, capacity of 10 gigawatt in India also. And uh, we are regular doing business with Sungro. And uh, the segment available uh, in Sungro are very compatible. And uh, the block size which we are choosing to save the BOS, etc., the block size uh, is also very important for finalization or uh, execution of the project. And the, whatever segment available in Sungro is very compatible to choose and uh, finalize the block size. Like we can go for 10 megawatt block and 12.5 megawatt block, which is uh, saving a lot in some construction cost or BUS cost. So, hello? I'm audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. So, and uh, Rafi uh, earlier told that uh, the Sangro is bankable. Other also bankable, but uh, Sangro is consecutively two years. They are hundred percent bankable, and uh, so we should uh, go for the bankable inverter as well. In in addition of that, the major uh, part is uh, the cost. And warranty is very much important. We have to take care of that uh, before finalizing any inverter. So if we go with the uh, uh, Sungro or any other uh, inverter, we have to minimum. Uh, we have to take minimum five years warranty. And uh, even during when you finalize the inverter, you can uh, opt for the extended warranty options also. And uh, the, the what charges will happen means you can cover or uh, take commitment in writing from the vendor about the extended warranty means six to 25 years. You and also you can also uh, take warranty also. So whatever cost is there, you can negotiate and finalize extended warranty. So you can uh, means uh, uh, means uh, in nutshell you can uh, means or. Oh, oh, 25 years life you can save to if you get uh, the extended warranty from the uh, the OEM manufacturer like Sungro or any other. That's uh, so. In addition of that, uh, sometime downtime is also very much important. A lot of downtime are there. So what I suggest to everyone, everyone before when you are choosing inverter, you should go. Who is giving maximum uptime warranty? So uptime is a very much important uh, point, and uh, whatever downtime is there, you can uh, take claims or something. Uh, means uh, you can uh, save your generation if the downtime is more than uh, normal. Uh, normal conditions are there, and uh, downtime is there. Then you can also claim from the OEM supplier what uh, the losses you have beard during downtime downtime even you should also uh, take care about the spares uh, most of the uh, companies are not uh, providing spares so when you finalize uh, means before closure of commercial you should also go for uh, uh, a list you show a list uh, which required for your 5 years uh, ondm means some you can uh, ask vendor to supply some igbt uh, maybe it's foc or it is in the part of the cost of uh, complete project some igbt sort of some uh, other spares you can keep always at your plant to minimize the downtime so if uh, and uh, you can uh, uh, ask for some regular preventive maintenance uh, the vendor uh, to the OEM vendor, so he also uh, do the preventive maintenance and uh, save from the various uh, downtimes and various faults. So this is the this is the major points, uh, and the cost is also very much important. 
uh, and uh, country to country it uh, may vary but uh, we have to uh, take care cost of all cost of uh, inverter also but it's only we should not go for cost only because other things also if other thing also we have to consider because if cost is lesser is there because uh, we uh, buy some cheaper uh, inverter in one project but a lot of down times lot of failures of igbt lot of uh, things we are coming fuses every time uh, means the this is the very uh, uh, means uh, we cannot uh, tolerate at a later stage so uh, only cost is not an important but the performance of the inverter is also very important so we have to choose a few uh, uh, thing few points we have to take care during the finalization of uh, central inverter and uh, as uh, all people uh, belong most of the people are belongs to bangladesh just want to discuss about our upcoming project in bangladesh and uh, happily announced that we are also going with sungro inverter 3.125 for 200 megawatt maximum project so uh, almost it is uh, closed and uh, closed uh, from our side and uh, all the papers will be sign off in coming week and uh, we are going with sungro only so it's uh, uh, biggest i think it's a uh, biggest project of uh, bangladesh and uh, uh, in solar and uh, sungro also so thank you uh, thank you mr hassan uh, for listening to me so uh, thank you maybe my points thank maybe thank you mr sharma yeah 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 please uh, yes actually we will uh, come back to you if any question is arise or any any panelist is asking any question to you uh, sure, sure. so thank you mr sharma uh, for your valuable discussion. And next, I am going to give the floor to Mr. Shudhi Patak, head, uh, head engineer of Hero Future Energy. So uh, to Mr. Uh, Shudhi Patak, actually, we want to uh, learn about the what is the latest variance of available for the central inverter and how efficiency level uh, of the uh, central inverter is now changing or uh, changing the game here and also how central inverter technologies impact the per, uh, project performance. So Mr. Shudit Patak, uh, welcome and the floor is yours. All right, thanks. Uh, thanks, Asun. Uh, yeah, uh, as you were saying, like how the technology of uh, the central inver uh, inverter is evolving, right? So before touching upon that, uh, I will just try to throw upon uh, that central inverter uh, in older days, that started with the size of as small as 250 uh, kilowatt. When I'm saying so, it was like uh, some 10 years back. Okay, 10 years back, 250 kilowatt was taken as a central inverter, which is now is, is being taken as a string inverter, right? Because now if you see in the market, uh, 250 kilowatt, uh, you will find that a lot of uh, OEMs are there who are providing you as a string inverter. So as we build up uh, the solar plants from 5 megawatt now to 600 or 500 megawatt so from that perspective our block size is increasing okay uh, when i say block maybe to the bangladesh audience the block size is like uh, what is the uh, uh, multiplier like see so you have a 20 megawatt of uh, solar plant or then suppose you want to make 10 megawatt into 20 right so it, so you have 10 megawatt of block i'm saying ac DC is separately the DC ratio. So uh, since in order to you have the lowest LCOE, the demand is that in case, in case you are going for a central inverter, because typically now there's a lot of uh, choices given whether to go for central or string inverter. And as your question is focusing on central inverter, so let me try to stick to it and I will just slightly try to give some in, uh, insights on string as well. So as we move ahead and try to make our blocks bigger and bigger number one number two uh, we also need to see since uh, the inverters nowadays available is 3.125 3.3.75 in 5 megawatt or even now slightly higher also so the size of the inverter matters uh, as far as uh, the aspects two aspects broadly what i'm trying to say which transformer you are you are you are going to choose correct 
and also the interchangeability like for example if you are taking a string inverter or a central inverter of suppose 3.125 or let us say 3.75 of vendor a or oem a and let us assume that after 5 6 or 10 years that vendor is not there anymore okay then there should and you need spares and even suppose your spare have also exhausted so there should be interchangeability you should be able to exchange so from that perspective uh, what should happen that the inverter which you are choosing first of all that should be interchangeable in, in in future you should have at least two or three vendors of that particular size second thing as we are increasing our size of the block so in case we have a small size of inverter you will have multiple inverters will be connected to single transformer like for example if i say if i am making a 10 megawatt block and if somebody chooses 1.25 megawatt of inverter then he there he needs a multi multi winding transformer which is uh, from short circuit capability perspective is also difficult to manufacture and you will not find many vendors even for the transformer itself okay coming to the efficiency part efficiency part see there are there are, there are two aspects one is efficiency second is mppt so uh, now if you have a central inverter which is 5 megawatt size but has a has a single mppt then it is not it is it is not judicious to uh, buy those inverters in case you have a land which is not flat which is having uh, undulations and uh, and and also if a different part of the location of the plant you have a different kind of soiling for example if you are putting your solar plant uh, just beside a highway okay uh, and or you are putting somewhere near a dry land although i i know that since we are working in bangladesh so bangladesh is fully uh, like full of water okay so there the chances and full of water the the, the chances of getting soiling loss is less however we have seen at several locations of bangladesh where are, there are some hilly regions okay so from that perspective one has to be very very selective in case you are going on a land which is quite monolithic quite flat then you should go for a bigger size and as far as efficiency is concerned efficiency of all the inverters whichever you take because the technology has now got so matured initially it came with a two level topology uh, then uh, three level uh, now it is quite common now even people are talking about five level also right four and five level topology which is going to, and even with silicon carbide also sic based uh, inverters which are much more efficient so that these days the efficiency of the inverter as far as central is concerned is taken as somewhere 98.5 98.6 okay which is you can see if you take any inverter more or less it will be in the in the in the in the same band but one important or in fact two two important points which we need to consider while selecting it as far as uh, the central inverter is concerned how many mpptes it has and what is the mechanism of uh, uh, like uh, how much modular modular it is in case one stack fails is it easily replaceable and also in case one stack fails whether other stacks are working uh, or the complete inverter will fail third is it, it is is it indoor or outdoor if it is indoor what is the ventilation requirement okay that will add on to the, add on to the cost there is there are several and uh, fourth very important point specific to bangladesh that bangladesh is uh, like densely populated second huge rainfall third lot of cyclones so it is a it, it's a typical example of a tropical country so even if any oem is giving and saying that our inverter is completely outdoor so one should be extremely careful about its outdoor capabilities as far as bangladesh is concerned because uh, almost 6 months there is a rainfall then lot of humidity what is ip number have these inverters been tested for real ip conditions or not because many oems they claim my inverter is ip54 you can put it outdoors and, and also there is lot of sunlight also so what is the residual life of that particular inverter so this is uh, what i am trying to guide that uh, the central inverter as of now it is good to choose uh, because 
they are coming at the lower cost as compared to the string inverters but just touching a small point on string inverters because i i know that there are several because i think towards uh, northeastern part of india whatever part is there in in bangladesh that is quite hilly and i know that there are a lot of uh, solar plants which are coming there so definitely i will say that at those locations central inverters should be stayed away from one should go for string inverters because in a string inverter the advantage you have they have multiple mppts wherein each and every string act as a separate independent independent entity for example uh, error number 1 is kept on uh, eastern slope error number 2 is on southern or western slope error number 3 is on suppose sloping towards north error number 4 is sloping towards south then if you put all of them to a central inverter you will not get the optimum generation because all the arrays will behave in a different way so the weakest array will drive all of them and ultimately your your capex may be less but your lcoe will be high from that uh, perspective uh, then you should select a suitable string inverter where you can connect each and every string as a, on a, in a unique way another another advantage of that is that uh, i think one of the speakers was uh, speaking about because now data data is much more, is much more important like putting a solar plant is an easy job uh, running it for 25 years is i think a tougher job and running at your projected yield whatever you have whatever you have estimated central inverters if you are taking so you need to have a string level monitoring for a string level monitoring you you need to have a string monitoring boxes right so the problem with assembly which whatever india has learned that i think bangladesh uh, is slightly behind that because solar is new to, new to them so central inverters are good because people are, if if they are looking at the cost but if you have to monitor because as you go with a 200 megawatt size plant or even higher then you can't deploy numerous people at site to keep on checking with their multimeters what is the current going which string has flawed that was good for 5 megawatt 10 megawatt 20 megawatt But if you go for such a big size, you need a smart people, S- smart systems. You need IOTs, right? So string monitoring boxes haven't proven to be good IOTs because their string monitoring has huge failures, and and I I can foresee that in Bangladesh it it will be much more because there is a light lot of lightning prone, lot of cyclone prone area, thunderbolts are there, which creates lot of noises. those noises by induction and and there are also a water whenever lightning falls it f- travels very fast in, in in water whenever lightning travels in, in in water or somewhere it creates lot of huge current and in uh, central inverters you have a lot of ldi by dt feature that is a basic mathematics in ldi by dt feature there will be lot of over voltages which may lead to the failure of the modules so there we need to have small loops try and uh, so that our uh, these loops do not lead to the failure so in general if i summarize that yes string inverters are uh, their central inverters are quite good you have to be selective based upon our land profile but all we always be cautious that whenever we do a monitoring of string we should try to see that the communication channels which we use to monitor they are robust they are not in they are not susceptible to any induction and failures of your communication uh, fail, uh, channels if it is not possible to design then let us try to move to the string inverters yeah that's it from me thank you mr shudhir for your uh, technical discussion about the central and string just i am going to ask you a uh, additional question about the central inverter what do you think that is uh, the central inverter ab- about the excess of the central inverter or uh, about uh, the because here what we have got our lands or the project size it bit remote or not in the locality because uh, bangladesh is a very densely populated country so in that in that uh, manner is what do you think that is uh, the central inverter need uh, the conveyor or need the truck because of it weights uh, what do you think is there any challenge for bangladesh for installing this kind of inverter 
yeah see uh, like if i take a central inverter i uh, i uh, i understand its tonnage is somewhere 3 to 5 tons okay and uh, so uh, so um, from that perspective if you go for a transformer which in any case of is, is of 15 tons right which is thrice the weight of one string one central inverter so from that perspective yeah log- logistics is a problem but may not be the for for the inverter it may be for even module trucks it is a uh, 20 feet or even at times uh, big size containers and the even if you are putting a substation which is a uh, uh, like uh, you have an big transformer which is of 150 metric ton so de- definitely that is a problem because uh, the road conditions are not that good second thing there are lot of village roads and even there are lot of culverts which are weak which can't take the load of uh, even 100 metric tons so from that perspective this is definitely a challenge but every challenge is an is an opportunity uh, so that one has to do a very fine logistic survey before arriving to the site uh, so from from that perspective uh, to answer your question in short yeah uh, logistic is a is a challenge but may not be for inverter but it is bigger for transformers and uh, for the modules and we have to plan it suitably yeah thank you mr parak uh so thank you mr parak uh, uh right now we are moving towards to mr rajiv paul but before that we want to uh want to have a try with mr sharir ahmed choudhury uh mr sharir can you hear us yes mr hasan i'm audible now yeah sir you are audible so uh, thank you sir okay. so uh, uh now i want to ask mr sharir that is how central inverters helps in lcoe management that is how it can impact on the lcoe of the system uh, sir floor is yours so the lcoe means uh, level as cost of energy right and that means the reliability so if uh, exactly. your system can run reliably yeah that is the most important thing as you know that initially the project that has been approved in bangladesh those uh, the tariff were comparatively high tariff but now gradually day by day tariff is going down so we need to be very uh, cautious while designing the systems so in case of reliability i think for uh, smaller systems uh, i would say that string inverter is much better because uh, uh in that case we can keep some uh, inverters as spare so if some problems happen so we can easily replace those in the in the field but in case of central inverter we cannot uh, keep uh, you know some spares because it cost uh, cost much and uh, what mr shudhi has said that uh, uh, yeah definitely we need to have the string level monitoring system that is number 1 and number 2 the availability of spare and uh, and and uh, develop but they should consider that uh, which are and also the inverter manufacturer they should provide the list of you know equipments uh, which from their experience they find that frequently those equipment get damaged or something like that so there should be some inventory in the plan so from my experience in some projects i found that uh, if something happens say for example if i use a 2 megawatt inverter in a 20 megawatt project and if some something happens in that uh, inverter so you are losing all, almost 10% of total uh, you know energy of that plant and that is a huge loss uh, for the developer so while choosing the and especially uh, we, we go for central inverter for the large large projects because string inverter are costly though uh, from i mean uh, from my experience i think that string inverter is better in reliability sense but uh, on the other hand Uh, its cost is higher so if if we want to consider the cost things then definitely we should for large scale projects we should go for central inverter but at the same times we need to be very cautious and uh, a spare should be available and and we should go some uh, with some uh, you know inverter manufacturer who can provide the warranty and guarantee terms and also another things and how fast they can uh, replace you know the faulty uh, equipment that is also very important and the grid system in bangladesh you know bangladesh is not 
I would say the not very stable grid in some some of our projects. We have very frequent grid outages, especially those uh, uh, those solar power plants which are connected to the 33 kV grid substations. And usually, uh, I mean, if the project size is 50 megawatt or more, then government uh, doesn't allow to connect that in 33 kV substation. But on the other hand, uh, bigger substation, I would say the grid substation are very close to the you know city area. And it is very difficult, as uh, you have already mentioned, that uh, Bangladesh is a very densely populated country. So to get suitable law and land for large scale solar PV project development is not very close to the uh, you know, township. Uh, and so uh, grid substation, I, I would say that 33, 132 kV grid substation is not close there. So whenever we are uh, developing large scale projects and where central inverter is there, so either we need to construct a very long transmission line that definitely is a challenge but if you go for 33 kv and if you hook your power in 33 kv substation you need to consider the low voltage systems and yeah mainly the low voltage and also uh freaking uh, uh grid outage so these are the things um uh, you know we need to be very careful while choosing the system because from one of my experience i have seen that the uh, developer has chosen one of the inverter which has the uh, you know connecting instead of the uh, solid state switching uh, their, their magnetic switching was there and sometimes uh, and in some days due to the you know variation of the voltage and also the uh, frequency uh, that uh, one inverter may switch more than uh, you know 50 or 60 times a day and that is uh, and we have found that uh, they had to change almost half of their inverter due to the failure of the you know the switching devices so these are the things from from our experience and also the you know the voltage voltage level usually uh, the inverter manufacturer they provide you know minus 15 percent to plus uh, 10 percent i mean voltage uh, operation range and while choosing the inverter in case of bangladesh you know you should uh, you should select some inverter which has a lower uh, operating voltage range as well. Otherwise, you will find that uh, your inverter uh, uh, go in shutdown mode, showing that the low voltage systems. So these are these are some of the systems. And in terms of LCOE, okay. what you have mentioned, that of course the reliability of the system is there. So thank we need you, to be, uh, uh, be careful about the uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your uh, for your valuable comments. And uh, we are running out of time right now. Thank you, Sharia Machodri. And uh, right now, our last speaker is Mr. Rajiv Paul from the Sun Group. Uh, 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 so uh, I'm going to Mr. Rajiv Paul. Mr. Rajiv Paul, can you hear us? Yeah. Thank you, Hassan. Thank you, Hassan. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, it was a pleasure listening to Hello? all the ex. Hello. Am I audible? Am I audible? Hello. Hello, Mr. Hassan. Am I audible to you? Am I audible? Yes. Yeah, you are audible to me. You are audible to me. Am I audible to you? Yeah, yeah. Both you are audible, please. Okay. Uh, so first of all, uh, it was a pleasure listening to all the experts on their thoughts. Uh, I'd not take much of a time, but I'd just like to uh, throw some light from whatever experiences I could gather while executing a 35 megawatt AC project. Uh, my client was Spectra and the power of ticker is BPDB. So Spectra was Hello. 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 Am I audible to you, Mr. Hassan? I think I'm audible to rest of the people, rest of the panelists, as well as all other audiences. Hassan, Mr. Hassan? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Yeah. Mr. Rajiv. So uh, uh, in Bangladesh, I think getting a land suitable for solar from all aspects for the best LCOE design is Hello, just Hello, like Mr. Rajiv Paul. Can you hear us? Uh, uh, Mr. Hassan, everyone else can hear me. Uh, I think there's a problem with your connection. Uh, so, okay, I, I'll continue uh, since we are short of time. So yeah, I'll yeah, continue. please, please continue. So, so getting a piece of land in Bangladesh is like getting a gold dust. I mean, I have been uh, uh, going north, south, east, west of this country as we are looking for some more projects. So getting a piece of land is really difficult and after getting a land the land development 
is one major concern because the land development, the rainfall data and the HFL level is so high. So the design has to be very proper because we have to ensure that my plant is always above the HFL. So the structure, the module mounting structure, as well as the piling, it becomes a big task in itself for meeting the construction timeline because being a tropical climate country it rains approximately six to seven months and it's very difficult to manage the workforce and get the plant erected within the stipulated timeline as per the ppa clauses next when i talk about inverter and combiner boxes so in this plant we have used string monitoring boxes but again, we have equipped this plant with one more monitoring system just before the SCADA system, which we call it as PV monitoring system. So we have done a two level topology monitoring in this plant. We have used PVM as a second SCADA, which collects all the data from the PV field. And that data is then being routed to the main SCADA, which is called as HV SCADA. Now regarding the inverter, uh, the plant has been running, the plant has been running since last 10 months. And over here, although the soiling losses are less, but the most uh, important thing that we need to consider about solar PV plants of utility scale in Bangladesh region is the humidity. Now why I'm talking about humidity is that, first of all, since most of the lands are surrounded by water, we have to go for over had overground cabling right starting from string cables till the 33 kb cable so the cost on this aspect also gets high because you have to for uh from the inverter station to the uh, switchgear panel it has to be a marine grade cable because it rains and the water it can get submerged in water as far as string cables are concerned it has to be overground otherwise uh, we will be uh, having approximately 150 to 200 string falls daily, and it will be very difficult to maintain the plant. Now, when I talk about this inverter, SunGrow Central Inverters, SunGrow Central Inverters, one major criteria while we select inverter for Bangladesh utility scale projects is we have to go through the PPA terms very carefully because since this plant of ours is connected to the 33 kb system there's a specific requirement about the reactive power compensation in the ppa like for this plant it was approximately if i'm not wrong it was approximately 20 percent 20 percent of the ac power we have to uh, uh, put a reactive power compensation so it came out to be 8 mvar as per the load flow study and we had to install an, an uh, SVG, static word generator of 8 MVAR rating. Along with that, when we select the inverter, the inverter reactive power capability becomes very important in that case. Because the power plant controller, which has been installed in this plant, it basically decides whether the plant will be operated in the fixed power factor mode or fixed reactive power mode. So this is one more aspect which you need to consider while we select central inverter as far as Bangladesh market is concerned. Because as Sharia's sir said that the plants, utility scale plants, which are being connected to the 33 kV substation, they're very prone to grid disrupt, disruption and grid instability. So this is a very important aspect. Next is... Uh, the temperature derating. The temperature derating, I don't think it's much of a concern because in Bangladesh, the temperature, the ambient temperature hovers around 35 to 36 degrees centigrade during peak summer season. So that is not a problem. One more aspect which I'd like to throw light upon is that when we are doing the construction of this plant, because the land and the land development cost is huge along with the piling cost. So we need to do some innovative engineering and innovative construction and design. Like one example I can give you, I, I can reduce some cost by doing the frog leap arrangement of the, of the modules while I form a string. 
and then connect to the inverter. Over here, uh, the substructure, the substructure, the substructure of the pile is approximately 4.5 meter deep, and the superstructure is around 1.5 meter. So the my module's lowest level is 1.5 meter level above the ground, and the inverters pl are placed on a platform which has been raised by another 1.5 meter, which is a steel platform along with foundation, civil foundation. So over here we have used a 6.25 megawatt block SE. So also uh, we need to look into what is the best and the optimum block size for Bangladesh region while we choose the inverter inverters. Because as it is, there are many BOS costs which will have an impact on the LCOE design of the plant. And as I uh, as I fully agree with Mr. Uh, Sudhir Patak sir, that string inverters on some regions where the terrain is hilly and there are different orientation of modules, because string inverter gives me the leverage of multiple MPPTs. So as far as the flat land is concerned, it looks like the central inverter is the best option, but for regions where the terrain is hilly, we can look into the string inverters and do a techno-commercial analysis to arrive at the best LCOE design. This is from my end. Any questions, Aya? It will be my pleasure to answer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rajipal. Uh, I have a question to you that is, it is come from a panelist. That is, uh, one question is about the central inverter have some uh, a thing that is for the inventory in, and spare parts. So what is uh, uh, the, actually this uh, official service schedule or what is yeah. the way that uh, so the I'll, inventory I'll, can be kept? Yeah, I'll tell you, uh, as far as this project is concerned, the, uh, the developer, the, my client has signed a 10 years extended warranty with me. And as per that, we have okay. supplied the mandatory spears as well as the uh, auxiliary materials as per manufacturer recommendation. But I have the full data okay. since last 10 months. Since last 10 months, there are three faults which are happening in my plant as far as inverter is concerned. One is the GFDI fault, which is a ground fault detection indicator. So it's a it's like it's like the first first wall of defense. Second is an insulation impedance. And third is leakage current. So all these things also boils down to very small things like how you are connecting your MC4 connectors and how you are dressing them. In many of the plants, you will see the MC4 connectors being dressed, placed on the purlin. Now, when there is a there is a gap between the two modules, so when the rain falls, and if the MC4 connector mm -hmm. is having some loose connection whenever it gets in touch with the uh, module structure, which is metallic in nature. So there's a leakage current which flows. And with mm -hmm. subsequent flow, uh, flow of leakage current, leakage current, the fuse, melting point of fuse comes down. So whenever there will be a high leak, since suppose if I talk about a 15 ampere fuse, so there's a leakage current, continuous leakage current, which is very negligible, but it is doing a damage. It is bringing down the melting point of the fuse. So in case of any aberration from the normal scenario, they'll, even if a 10 ampere current flows, since the melting point of the fuse has come down, it will give me a trip signal. So we have seen this at our plant and we have found the solution. We have done the root cause analysis. So there are things which are very specific to weather as far as Bangladesh is concerned because of its tropical nature. And see, our plant is our plant is just on the bank of Padma River, which is known as Ganga in India. So there's a humidity impact is very high. I hope I could answer your question. Hello. Yeah, you're audible. Yeah, we can yeah, hear that's you. It. That's it. Yeah, that's it. So we have already supplied the spares and everything for 10 years of extended warranty. And we have a dedicated uh, service team over here. So as such, there is no problem. So all the problems are boiling down to the weather conditions and the small works in the PV field. 
which needs some common sense. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rajib. So here uh, from our panelists, if uh, is there any question from anyone regarding uh, the central inverter? Uh, you can ask right now. Anybody want to ask anything? So we have a question from our attendee site. I'm just putting it on stage. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, may I answer this? Yes, sir. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Ali, for your question. Uh, so, uh, when you are talking about when you are asking about this BSS solution, so what is what is the purpose basically? It is is it a peak shaving, or is it just uh, any other application based? So, because your system will depend on the applicability. If you are uh, deciding or uh, if you are trying to develop a BSS integrated plant for a peak shaving then the purpose is different. If you are trying to do for any other application, then the design would be different. So I think your question, uh, we can have a one-to-one -one discussion on this. Uh, you can take my contact. So regarding your application, then I can suggest you the best design, why you should, whether you should go for string or central. So it depends on your application. Yes, as I told you, uh, uh, as I told you, uh, one of the major parameters, other than what S. P. Sharma sir said and uh, Sudhir Pathak sir said, for Bangladesh projects, specifically for Bangladesh projects, you need to look into the reactive power capability of central inverters before you decide on, because in Bangladesh the reactive power compensation is a big big point so whenever we are signing ppas or when we are doing epcs we have to be very clear about that capability Snehil, I think uh, most of the points is covered. Okay, and, sir. Uh, so uh, I think uh, should be over or anything else is there, then we can discuss. Otherwise, we should leave if. Uh... No, sir. These all questions we have now. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, all our esteemed panelists, for such an insightful session, sparing your precious time and extending your support for this event. Hassan, sir, you were absolutely outstanding. Thank you so much for the terrific and very professional example you set as a moderator. It was a pleasure working with you and participating in such a well-planned and high-energy panel discussion. Thank you, everyone, for extending your time. And a special thank to our partner, Sungrow, for immense support to organize this event. We promise you to come back with more exciting topic very soon. The floor is now open for networking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Snehil. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, everyone, for participating uh, in this uh, session. Thank you all. Thank you, sir.
थैंक यू सो मच हसन सर